Here we have a line drawing I drew for an earlier video, but now I want to consider adding tone to this drawing. Now, I'm very happy with my line work, I'm happy with the effect and how it looks, but what I want to show in this video is how by using tone, I can make a line drawing really come alive. I've got here my trusty color chart, as I call it, and it has the seven tones of the Copic sketch markers that I use. And I use the brush end, I never use the chisel end. So although I'll put this off camera, I will be referring to it constantly to get a sense of what's the best tone. The way we read tone is always relative to the other tones around it. So it's not so much what the actual tone strength I use is in any one spot, but it's more how close or lighter or darker is it to the tones around it. Now, one little tip where we have a color reference photo to print off a black and white copy. I happen to have one which I printed off for my previous video. It does take the guesswork out of what does this look like in black and white compared to this, compared to the green. It's not just that some shade and shadow is darker than others, but the local color, the actual, if you like, real color of the objects are different as well. And in a monochrome, their starting point, if you like, can be very different without any shade or shadow. So let's go. I often start with the lightest color. My lightest tone is N0, and I'm going to just use that, not because I'm confident that this is the tone I want, but it just gets me started. I think I'll leave the zero, and I'll try the one, and I think that's a better choice. Now I'm looking at all the areas of the building which have the lighter shade to them, which is mostly on the facade. I'll speed this up. I'm going to now go to N2. I feel like there are parts that are a bit too light. This ink does dry slightly lighter. I want to consider the dome now, and we have both the effect of shade and shadow. Now, the lighter section is going to be down here. So at the start, I'm going to leave that white, and I'm going to use a zero for this top part. I'm going to use a two here for the local color. I wanted to go a bit, a bit darker with this dome. I've now gone to a three. I do want to try and reflect the fact that the local color of the dome is darker than the local color of the stonework, but still there is direct light reflection on it, which makes it virtually the same in parts. A bit of two and use a one up here. So having established some of the lighter tones, I now want to work on the darker tones, which are all in this foreground section. They will be important then for how I adjust midtones. So I'm going to experiment with using a two for the lightest parts of these clipped edges. Although I will leave some edges white just as a, a little interesting highlight. I might try a four for some of the darker areas because I want it to go darker than, than I went in the dome. Now this fir tree is quite a dark shape. This one down here is a matching plant, obviously, but it's important that the perspective works the same way. And so the tops of these trees need to line up with approximately the same perspective that everything that's on the same horizontal level from this place to this place does. I'm going to get three. Let's do this gutter edge in a darker number four. I'm not yet sure about the final strengths of tone for these plants, but I'm going to do them all now with a one and then make adjustments. I'm going to come in with a two for what I just did as the one. And this is the, the back and forth, back and forth 
if I'm making my lightest plant colors darker, then I'm going to be making my darkest ones darker too. Obviously, it saves time and ink to get it right the first time, but I enjoy drawing. I don't mind just plodding back and forth, making adjustments. So that works better with them being darker, but I think now we need to push the darks darker than we have. So where I had a three, I'm going to use a four. And there's also a chance just to show a little, a little bit of texture with shadow with these. I, I know I've got line work, it is often a great chance to just add a, a little more interest in our marks. So having come over this now with a four, I'm going to run a five down this hedge here. Now I'm really aware how far out this hedge line is. So because it's a dark color, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I can actually massage the effect of this line up slightly and make it hopefully just a little less obviously too low. I need to do this. I also want to adjust some of my shadows on the building, make them a bit darker. So here we go. Having darkened this hedge from an N4 to an N5, it gives me a chance now to darken this pavement from an N3 to an N4. So I think I will do that. And you can see how then, having made one tonal choice, it had a flow on effect to others because I'm trying to keep the various tones in proportion to each other, the lighter tones, the darker tones, because it's the contrast I want to always maintain. So again, I'm going darker because I feel that to bring out a greater contrast here will provide greater visual interest. Then we reach a time where it's helpful to have a look and to work out where do I want to go darker. And I think I want to go a bit darker on the dome and a bit darker in these doors at the front. So I'll do that and then I'll have another consideration. I'm now at the point where I'm standing up and looking from a little bit further back at my drawing and just feeling what bit needs a bit of tweaking? Where would a little more contrast work well? Where does it look a little flat or a little poorly defined? And so I'm trying to respond to that now. And I'm not so concerned with the reference photo and how it looks. Once we finish a drawing, people are just looking at our drawing as a standalone. They're not making comparisons. So we want to have what looks good here. So for instance, these doors with the reflection on the local color, they were still relatively light although darker than the windows, I've made them quite a bit darker because I just felt like it helped to anchor the lower floor, say, this is the entranceway, and these tones related to these tones, and therefore helped to connect the distance with the foreground. I've worked hard to leave little bits of white flashing here and there. It just gives the eye a bit of help in seeing there's two objects coming together there, which is both helpful both for meaning, but also for the effect. Just creates a little light stimulus for the eye. <laughs> and I just realized I haven't drawn the balustrade down here. I was resisting the urge to add details. I'm going to draw this in. So I'm tempted to go now. Now, what were the other points that I forgot? Oh, I know, I was, I was thinking I could try and make the hedge feel a bit higher. The trick with correcting an error like this after the event is to not try and correct it too much. We're trying to make the error look less wrong. It's too late to put the hedge in the right place. But I think that does look a bit better. Now 
knowing when to stop with tone is just as important as knowing when to start. We have to stop somewhere. I'm stopping here. How do you think it compares to just as a line drawing? In the end, what we prefer is just preference, but it's always great to have the option of pursuing adding tone to our work or drawing it as standalone line work. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Tone is a wonderful medium to be able to add to a drawing. But if we've done a nice line drawing, it can be tempting to want to stop there and to be afraid of spoiling it when we put the tone on. I know that feeling every single time I do a drawing that I put tone on. We have to push through that or else we're never going to go past a small measure of the potential that we have. So never let fear of making a mistake hold you back. At the very least, it will be a successful learning experience, even if it's not a successful drawing. It's how we learn. So give it a go. Before you start though, always test out separately using the tone over the fine liners that you've drawn with. Some inks will blur some lines. Because I use the same brand for both fine liner and sketch marker, I find that's not a problem. But sometimes when I've swapped brands for one reason or another, I found that the lines smudge when the tone's put over them, particularly if it's put over slowly or thickly. So just don't get caught on that. Hey, and if you're still watching at this point and you haven't subscribed, please do. It helps me with my channel if you interact with it in these ways. So have fun. See you next time.